Hello, my name is Joanna de la Cruz from the BRC Imaging Facility of Cornell University. This lecture focuses mainly on some of the more common types of microscopy, the role of objectives in imaging, and the various objective-related factors that impact image quality and resolution. So, let's put your microscopy knowledge to the test. Deciding which type of microscopy technique to use may seem a bit intimidating because there are several imaging modalities out there. In making this choice, the first thing that you have to ask yourself is what kind of scientific information are you trying to gather? What question are you trying to answer? And based upon that, you can think about what kind of image data you need to answer that question. This will guide you in deciding what kind of imaging modality will be the most relevant for answering your problem. The second issue is pragmatics. What do you have available? Do you have a microscope in your lab or a neighboring lab? Does a core facility offer the type of microscope that you need? Thirdly, you should think in advance how you might potentially analyze your images because that will also influence how you collect your data. Remember, microscopy does not only involve generating beautiful images. Those images contain a lot of quantitative information that can be extremely important to achieving your imaging goals. Before imaging, one of the first things to consider is the type of specimen you want to explore. Do you have a thick specimen or a thin one? Different types of techniques are going to be suitable depending on how deep you have to go to see your objects. Another question you might ask is whether you are looking at a living sample or a fixed sample. If you have a fixed sample, you may not have to worry about damage nor time of acquisition. However, if you are looking at living cells, you have to think about how fast you want to acquire images so that you can record dynamics or image through thick samples while being cautious about cell damage. How small are the objects you want to measure? Resolution must also be defined in terms of contrast or the level of signal you get with respect to measurement uncertainties. Sample carriers can also determine the configuration of the microscope you ought to use. Microscopes can either be upright or inverted based on the position of the objectives relative to the stage on which the sample is placed. Conventional microscopes are upright. The objectives are placed above the stage, pointing downwards. Mounted slide specimens are generally imaged with this type of microscope. Inverted microscopes, on the other hand, have the objectives pointing upward and are found below the stage where you put your sample. This type of microscope is typically used in live specimen imaging in closed dishes. All microscopes have the same main components, albeit in different configurations. It is essential that anyone using a microscope knows what these are. The oculars or eyepieces are the lenses that you look through to observe your sample. The nose piece is the rotating portion of the microscope that holds the objective lenses. All microscopes are designed to include the stage where the specimen is placed for observation. The condenser is used to collect and focus the light from the illuminator onto the specimen. The light source is required for sample illumination. The coarse focus knob is meant to bring the sample mostly in focus, and the fine adjustment is used to bring sample into sharper focus. Let's talk about some of the more common microscopy methods that you could use to observe your specimens. These include contrast enhancing techniques that generate intensity changes 
which are useful for microscopic observation and imaging. Bright field microscopy is one of the most basic and common methods used, whereby the sample is illuminated by white light that is transmitted through the sample onto the oculars or detectors. It is used to observe color and brightness information in stained or naturally pigmented specimens. It can also be used for unstained specimens, although such samples are usually difficult to observe due to the transparency of the specimen and the lack of contrast in the images acquired. Phase contrast is a technique that deals with this problem. It works by using special objectives with a phase ring and a condenser annulus to create a phase shift of light that results in an image with greater contrast. This bright field method is insensitive to polarization and biorefringence effects, which is a major advantage when examining unstained samples like living cells growing in plastic tissue culture vessels. A halo light ring is a natural result of using phase contrast, but most people consider this as an artifact, a distortionary effect that takes away from image quality. Differential interference contrast, or DIC microscopy, is another bright field method used to enhance the contrast of transmitted light images. It uses the polarization of light, translating refractive index differences into changes in intensity. This method is ideal for thick, unstained samples on glass slides or carriers that are not made of plastic. DIC images give the impression of topography and have a distinctive shadow cast or pseudo 3D appearance. The observation of fluorescence is the most rapidly expanding microscopy technique employed today, mainly because of the high contrast provided by this method. This has spurred the development of more sophisticated microscopes and a number of fluorescence accessories. Fluorescence involves the use of molecules that are designed to respond to a specific stimulus or to localize within a specific region of a biological specimen. It has a number of advantages over other forms of microscopy, offering high sensitivity and specificity. Fluorescence involves an object absorbing light at one wavelength and then re-emitting it at another wavelength. Okay, let's try answering this question. A student plans to study the morphology of an unstained monolayer of cells in a plastic petri dish. Which microscope type would be her best option? Brightfield, TIC, phase contrast, or fluorescence? The answer would be face contrast. The plastic culture dishes would give away the answer. Face contrast is insensitive to polarization and biorefringence brought about by plastic. Microscope objectives are perhaps the most important components of an optical microscope because they are responsible for primary image formation and they play a central role in determining the quality of images that the microscope is capable of producing. Objectives are instrumental in determining the magnification of a particular specimen and the resolution under which the specimen detail can be observed under the microscope. There are a number of markings on the barrel of a microscope objective lens that contain the specifications necessary to determine what the objective is designed for. These include the manufacturer, the class or special designation, which indicates the optical corrections offered by the objective, 
the infinity mark inscribed on the objective refers to an infinity corrected objective which allows the insertion of optical components such as filters beam splitters prisms and polarizers into the microscope system without affecting focusing objectives designed for special immersion media are marked with either oil glycerin or a w for water some lenses are designed to be used with all three microscope manufacturers also label their objectives with color codes to help in the rapid identification of magnification and any specialized immersion media the magnifying power of an objective is indicated by magnification numerical aperture is a critical value that indicates the light acceptance angle which in turn determines the light gathering power the resolving power and the depth of field of the objective most objectives are designed to image specimens that are covered by a cover glass or cover slip the value inscribed on an objective indicates the thickness of these cover slips since there may often be small variations in thicknesses within a batch of cover slips some objectives have a correction collar that adjusts the placement of the objective's internal lens elements in order to compensate for these variations some of these collar adjustments can also correct for changes in temperature or immersion media additional contrast enhancing properties of the objective are also inscribed on the objective barrel let's try another question in the objective shown what does the number 1.49 stand for magnification numerical aperture cover slip thickness or field of view 1.49 is the numerical aperture of the objective 100 is the magnification 0.13 to 0.19 is the range of cover slip thicknesses that are suitable for the objective 22 is called the field number which defines the image area of the specimen as i mentioned earlier the numerical aperture characterizes the range of angles over which the objective can accept or emit light the light gathering capacity of an objective directly influences its ability to resolve fine specimen detail na is given by the simple expression n sine theta n represents the refractive index of the medium between the objective front lens and the specimen and theta is one half of the angle of light collected by the objective now these figures illustrate a series of light cones derived from dry or air objectives of varying focal length and numerical apertures the longer the focal length of the objective the narrower the angle of light collection for a dry objective the refractive index n is 1. notice the wider the angle of collection the greater the capacity to collect light and based on the equation n sine theta the higher the na of the objective the numerical aperture of an objective is directly related to resolution imaging with a high na objective leads to better quality and better resolution images with resolution comes better detail which makes it easier to identify small objects in your specimen and distinguish them from other small objects when viewing two small points through a microscope the image of these points appears larger however with a high na objective you can still see these two objects but once we start going through lower NA objectives, we start losing resolution and eventually lose the ability to determine how many objects are actually present. 
an infinitesimally small point appears in the microscope as a spot with a certain size, with concentric rings around it. This is called the point spread function, or PSF. The center bright area of the PSF is called a disk, the size of which is about half the wavelength of light. This PSF reveals many of the optical properties of your microscope. When two small objects are separated by a distance at the limit of resolution, they can be resolved. However, when these objects are too close together, these objects would blur into a single spot and even the highest resolution objective may not be able to resolve these objects. This is due to diffraction. Diffraction sets a limit on resolution. According to Abbe, resolution is limited by the wavelength of light and the NA of the optical system. This means that the standard optical microscope with a high NA objective will not be able to resolve objects that are much smaller than 200 nanometers. But recent advances in microscopy have somehow bypassed the diffraction barrier. And depending on which approach one uses, super-resolution microscopy can achieve resolutions of around 20 times greater than that of conventional light microscopy. The wavelength of light used to image a specimen is also a determining factor in the degree of resolution afforded by a microscope. Shorter wavelengths are capable of resolving details to a greater degree than our longer wavelengths. So labeling your specimens with a fluorophore that can be excited with UV light would actually give an image with a higher resolution compared to one that has to be excited with visible or near IR light. Okay, what is the lateral resolution? For an object imaged with a 488 nanometer laser and an objective with 1.2 Na, 20.3 microns, 203 nanometers, 6.78 millimeters, or 678 nanometers. Remember that resolution can be estimated from the formula lambda over 2Na, so the answer would be 203 nanometers. Different transparent materials can transmit light at different speeds. Thus light can change speed when passing from one material to another. This change in speed usually also causes a change in the direction of light. This is called refraction. In microscopy, light emitted by a sample has to travel from the cover glass to the objective lens. So for an air objective, which has a refractive index that is different from the sample and the cover glass, light tends to be refracted more than if an immersion medium such as oil is used between the cover glass and the objective lens. Objectives that are designed to be used with oil, water, or glycerin increase the NA because refractive index differences between the objective lens and the cover glass or sample are largely minimized. Refractive index matching is an important factor to consider in optical microscopy, especially when working towards getting high-resolution three-dimensional images. For instance, if an oil immersion lens is used to image a sample immersed in an aqueous medium, the mismatch in refractive indices messes with the PSF as light goes deeper into the sample. This causes spherical aberration, bringing about the loss of information, resolution, and brightness with imaging depth, and results in images that are far from optimal. However, 
If a water immersion lens is used on the same sample, spherical aberration is averted due to refractive index matching. So as you image deeper into the sample, resolution is barely affected. The field of view is the area of the object that is imaged by a microscope system. The size of the field of view is determined by the objective magnification. In optical microscopy, resolution is somewhat a subjective value because at high magnification, an image may appear unsharp but still be resolved to the maximum ability of the objective. If you had to choose between two different objectives that give the same field of view, which one would you pick? A 40x.6 NA or a 40x.1.3 NA objective? Now let's say your goal is to image a large field of view of cells in buffer solution to count the number of live versus dead cells. Which of the following objectives would you use? A 10x.3 dry objective, a 63x 1.4 oil, 10x.45 water immersion, or a 40x 1.2 water. Now you would want a low magnification objective so that you'd have a bigger field of view. That would be the 10x objective. And since your cells are in buffer solution, a water immersion objective would provide the optimal image quality. So your answer should be 10x.45 water immersion objective. The correct cover glass thickness is another important factor in optimal imaging. If the wrong thickness is used, a serious loss in resolution is expected especially with high NA objectives. The optimum cover glass thickness of many objectives is 0.17 millimeters. This is commercially available as a number 1.5 or 1.5 cover glass. For some high NA objectives, a deviation of only a few microns from the standard 0.17 millimeters can significantly reduce resolution. Therefore, some more advanced objectives possess a correction collar or ring that can be turned to adjust the objective to the actual cover glass thickness which is in use. Water dipping lenses eliminate the need for cover slips. These objectives can be directly immersed in the solution of water which contains its specimens to look at. A mounting medium is the material that your sample is in while it is being imaged on the microscope. The simplest type is air, or a saline-based buffered solution such as PBS. Most people, however, use the term mounting media when referring to fixed cell imaging. These are used to preserve sample integrity for long-term storage and even to prevent photo bleaching. Many formulations of mounting media optimize refractive index to match that of glass, although typically these will not reach the specified refractive index values until after they have fully cured. Properties to protect the sample from photo bleaching also tend to increase during the curing process. Numerical aperture is directly related to the depth of field. For a given objective, when looking at a sample, there is a particular plane of perfect focus. The depth of field is how far above and below that plane the objective and sample can be in and still have everything in focus. In other words, depth of field refers to the actual resolving power of an objective. A higher NA will give a higher resolution, but the depth of field becomes considerably smaller. Low resolution objectives have larger depths of field. This is exactly the reason why the fine focus adjustment on the microscope must be set delicately and precisely for objectives with high NA, whereas for low NA, a few turns of the focus knob 
may seem to make no difference to the image. There are times when resolution has to take a back seat when other imaging tasks such as imaging depth or area is your priority. The working distance is the distance between the objective and the cover glass when your sample is in focus. When imaging through a thin cover glass, you can use objectives with shorter working distances. But when you are imaging samples that are in thicker vessels, such as plastic well plates, you will probably need an objective that has a longer working distance. High NA objectives usually have very short working distances. So if you have a thick sample, you might have to consider instead a lower NA objective with longer working distance. Let's try one last question. A 20 micron slice of tissue immersed in PBS is imaged with a high NA objective with a working distance of 190 microns. A loss of signal is observed starting at a focus depth of 15 microns. Which of the following is the likely cause of this? An oil immersion objective was used. A number 1.5 cover glass was used. The tissue was mounted flush on the cover glass. Fluorescence of the tissue sample was observed in the near infrared. The loss of signal observed at a focus depth of 15 microns is mainly due to spherical aberration, and this is because an oil immersion objective was used on a sample containing PBS, which is basically aqueous. This mismatch in refractive index between oil and water leads to spherical aberration deeper into the sample. Let's go over the main points of this talk. Optical microscopes are the workhorses of countless research labs performing a wide range of functions. So before using one, you have to identify your needs and anticipate the applications you intend to carry out. Think about the type of specimen you want to explore, how you are going to prepare it for imaging, and what imaging platform and contrast mechanism to use. Remember, microscope objectives are essential elements of a microscope, and knowing what they can do and how they can help you achieve your imaging goals is critical. Well, this ends my talk. I hope you check in again for part two. Thank you for listening and learning.